Hello and welcome. As many of you may know, Nawami International Malta is dedicated to promoting cultural understanding and cooperation through cultural and educational initiatives, as well as to community-based projects supported by Ronald McDonald House Charities Learning Center Malta. As we approach the International Day for People of African Descent, honoring the people of African diasporas, we are honored to present this interview with Martin Schwier, who is the chairman of Ronald McDonald House Charities Learning Center. And apart from this, he was also former director of the Migrant Offshore Aid Station, leading operations in aid of migrant boats in distress in the Mediterranean Sea. This conversation aims to serve as a meaningful prelude to the upcoming International Day, providing a nuanced view on how migration and challenges can intersect with broader social challenges and the dynamics within a community. So welcome, Martin, and thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. To begin with, could you please extend a little bit with us uh, what initially sparked your interest in working in the humanitarian field and in the field of migration? Well, it, it actually goes back many, many years. Um, um, my father actually worked for a long time at the Australian High Commission, and he was directly involved with uh, uh, the, the, the migration of Maltese citizens to, to Australia. We're talking about the late 60s, 70s, and early 80s. And, you know, as a child growing up, I remember my father coming, up, coming back home and, and telling us stories of, of, of resilience, of how resilient people who wanted to, to, to find a better life for themselves were. So he actually portrayed people who are living in, leaving Malta for a better life in Australia as, as you know, people to look up to. Um, I then moved on and I, I, I you know, my, my first degree is in social sciences, so I was always interested in sociology and social sciences. And when the opportunity came up in 2014 to, to join and head Migrant Doctor Aid Station, which was just an idea then, I took it up and did that for um, two and a half years. Wow, that is quite impressive. So you stayed in this line, in this line of, of humanitarian work, but moving on from MOAS to now as a director of RMHC. Yes, of course, this is, uh, um, this is not what I do professionally. I mean, uh, um, uh, today I'm, I'm the chairman of, of RMHC. Um, uh, it's, not, it's not what I do, but it's something that I do um, with great passion. Great. I mean, obviously, you know, as, as Noami International Malta, we're, you know, we're very grateful for the support um, that, that, you know, RMHC provides, you know, especially hosting our community based project together. We strive maybe just kind of to to expand a bit more about about, you know, Ron McDonald House of Charities and, and sort of, you know, what motivated, uh, you know, what motivates you to offer your space to, to community initiatives like ours. Um, you know, and how how do you see this this collaborative approach um, making a positive difference in the local community? Yes, first of all, our MHC is is a global NGO. There are uh, um, the Malta chapter is one of over three hundred and fifty chapters around the world. Our focus is uh, you know assisting and helping and improving the health and well being of children and their families. And when we were setting up uh, RMHC Malta, um, we want to do something which is um, effective. We want to be effective. We want to, to fill in a void. Um, uh, so starting from the location of where our educational center was, uh, we eventually um, went for Aura because we felt that the north of the island was somewhat um, underserved we decided to go for what we term as a hub for other NGOs to do good. We have a 360 square meter facility 
in, in, uh, in Aura. Um, we have lecture rooms, we have a teaching kitchen. Very soon, uh, hopefully, we'll have a multi-sensory room. We have offices where the NGOs we collaborate can operate from. Essentially, in addition to our programs, we have MOUs with over 20 NGOs. And these NGOs, um, which are various, which but which all come together in, in unison um, when it comes to, you know, a focus on, on, on children, families, well-being, health, integration, all of that. So we put the space at the disposal of these NGOs, and, and this is a place where they can run the program um, from. Um, uh, we are a, a facilitator, so to say. We want to we want to multiply um, the, the, the good that these NGOs can do. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, maybe now I can sort of uh, perhaps put you on the spot a little bit in terms of you know as, you know using your experience dealing with with migration and and in, and particularly in the migration sector. Um, obviously, you know pra practical ideas. You know, so so I suppose if if you had the opportunity to suggest one. One educational policy initiative Malta could take to to tackle to tackle racism. Um, you know what 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 would your what would your suggestion be? What does this country need in terms of education? Yeah, I think you know you 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 go to the um, lowest sort of common denominator, which you know we need to view people um, as human beings rather than judge them on the base of their race, and that that takes. Um, that needs to be our children because this is where you need to start need to be informed this is the narrative that needs to be um, provided in all sectors including um, education but outside of, of formal education that you know at the end of the day people are human beings. We are all made from the same cloth. I mean, I experienced it through over the years. Um, people really never leave their homeland um, for fun. They do so for a reason. Um, if they were, um, everything was okay, um, well, the great majority will never leave their homeland. So people are leaving um, because there is a reason. And that reason, is you know people looking in search for a better life so i think i think yes um we need to teach our children um or convey to our children the right message because based on that message our children will make informed decision as they grow up um of course you are coming up against um, a truckload of misinformation coming from all sources. So, you know, those who are in charge of the education of our children and our education, be it school, be it press, be it social media, have a responsibility to pass on um, a message. Thank you. Uh, exactly. I mean, passing on a message. The United Nations international team for this year for honoring the people of African descent, of the African diaspora, is actually focused on transformative education. And this ties in very much in what you just elaborated, what you just extended on. That means to say that it is suggested that mainstream education should shift from no from regular education more to transformative education which includes the the teaching of critical thinking of media literacy of character formation so that that people outside even outside the education for lifelong learning the grassroots as well as in, in from very early age on to learn how to form a critical thought, to, to ask questions, to learn how to ask questions and to make informed decisions, as you said, and informed choices. So um, this, this is dedicated, this year's 
United Nations International Day is dedicated to to foster this, uh, to spark off this idea of and promote idea of transformative education. And for example, Navam International Malta, we have community based projects which actually touch into this, like with our Together We Strive project, you got the booklet, and with our project of um, uh, moving beyond the, the, the single story, uh, combating exclusion through media literacy and critical thinking, we actually tapped into that um, uh, with, with community-based in initiatives such as discussion groups, our story cafes and so on to actually also find out what's the baseline in the community. And here is so much more work to be done. But as we are wrapping up our conversation, your insights about the field of migration and your experience with MOAS, what you just shared with us with what is needed uh, was truly um, informative. And look, and, and your current work now as well, looking ahead, what do you believe are the most pressing challenges that organizations like MOAS, for example, will face in the coming years? I mean, as the world clo goes closer together. And what advice would you give, would you leave for individuals who aspire to make a positive impact, you know, in the realm of humanitarian efforts and social change? Yeah, I, I think one of the challenges which, which MOAS and, but not just MOAS, but many NGOs um, are facing is this, uh, particularly in the area of, of, of racism, is, is this deluge of unbridled misinformation. So, mm -hmm. and it comes from all, uh, in all shapes and form and from, through many channel, channels. So, you know, that is a challenge, that is a reality. And uh, the way to deal with that is create this course, which is positive and which gives the other sides of the story. You know, our understanding of what is what depends very much on this course. So if we all, um, speak or most of us speak of integration in a positive manner, then that becomes the norm, that becomes this force, that becomes our understanding. So, yes, the challenge is to me misinformation, and the way to go about it is create, encourage uh, discourse which goes against that uh, um, misinformation in a way to neutralize that uh, misinformation. Exactly. And with this discourse, actually, we can involve families, children, youngsters, adolescents, because it starts right there. It starts right in the family and the, and the environments. And having a healthy environment means also less stress and has also an impact on well-being, on well-being of communities and families. And I think in that context, um, RMHC and Novom International Malta can continue our collaborative efforts in, in supporting communities, supporting families to, um, to function well together. Conway, do you have a last word or to share? Uh, just, just obviously just to say thank you uh, for, for your time. Obviously we understand you're very, very busy like, like a lot of people. Um, and you know, thank you for your support, um, which which we which we really appreciate. Thank you so much, and RMHC looks forward to to supporting Nwami um, further in the future. Thank you very much. We 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 are really proud to be uh, one of the so be benefactor beneficiaries of 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 of, of uh, RMHC and. Um, uh, you're giving us a fantastic opportunity with this amazing environment in uh, providing all sorts of initiatives, community engagement initiatives, because with places like yours, we are able to function. Thank okay. you so much. Thanks for your time.